So, I thought as, just as a way of opening up this morning, um, I would talk a little bit about the metaphysics and dynamics of what's going on with this unconscious darkness. And it's, it's basically that when the mind believed that it had separated from its source, this was a, a, a horrific experience, not in reality, but to the mind that believed that it had, had accomplished insanity, or that insanity was actually possible. Uh, this there involved a lot of, of pushing out, of denying and repressing. So, so the belief that you could separate from the source, that's the, the we'll call it the horrific idea. Uh, it's, in reality it's impossible, but it's, it's been called a tiny mad idea, and uh, you might put the emphasis on the mad. <laughs> it's, it's mad, it's insane. And because it was, the emotion associated with that tiny mad idea is, is, is fear, is terror. It's a horrific kind of idea, um, it's an intense emotion that's associated with it. And it's basically intolerable uh, to, for a mind that's used to peace and joy and love and happiness. Uh, those kind of emotions and that idea are pretty much intolerable. You know, you can't, there's no way to reconcile that, that intense fear with love. Because they, you know, it's like lightness and dark don't really coexist. Uh, the Bible had even said, perfect love cast out fear. So where there's perfect love, there is no fear. But, but with this intense emotion that seems to come from this error, um, it's intolerable, so it's completely pushed out of awareness. So sometimes I talk about private thoughts, or secrets. That's the biggie. Uh, that's the private thought or the secret that is intolerable to, to hold in mind. That separation from source is possible. And that is, is therefore pushed out of awareness. It's really pushed way down, down. It's might, you might say it's the, at the base of the unconscious. You know, that's, the, that's what the unconscious is about. That's why it's been pushed and been made unconscious, because it's too intolerable to deal with. Then on top of that comes more of what we could call like diluted uh, private thoughts. My friend Resta, who who joined with me and received all these songs from the angels. Uh, I was sharing with uh, Ms. Noel the, this line from Resta told me, she just laughed when she heard it. It was in one of her songs. But the angels were singing and, and basically it was, um, I take my guilt in small doses, six billion bodies give a little to each. Uh, this is the deflecting, this is a splintering of this ontological guilt, this horrific feeling of separating from God, and spreading it out over time and space, so it dilutes it, you know, into little bits of pleasures and pains, you know, it's not like, uh, wow, I just feel like I'm going to be crushed by guilt, it's more like, oh, I've got a, a sore back, or I have a toothache, or, uh, you know, I have a sore knee, or, you know, it's these little bits and slivers of discomfort. And also, little bits and slivers of pleasures that seem to be the opposite of the, the pain, but really aren't. They're kind of like, they're all part of a distractive device to keep the mind in a state of denial. Uh, to keep that original error, we could call it, that horrific attack thought, buried in, in out of awareness. So that the mind is like playing this time-space trick where it's trying to dilute the pain and throw in some pleasure and stay really distracted on the surface and stay away from getting down and healing the, the error. And that's why when we talk about like reincarnation it seems like people say, oh many, many lifetimes. This isn't just a trick deluding trick in what seems to be between birth and death. This seems to be a trick that's been going on for a millennium. A game of hide and seek. Playing hide and seek with your true identity. Uh, hide in the darkness, hide in the dust, 
hide in the cosmos and, and be attracted to some bits of the cosmos and to try to avoid these painful ones. But really when you're up on the surface, you know, you're not close to, to healing. In fact, the surface, uh, you know, we could call it, Jesus calls it the face of innocence, we could call it the top tier of this double tier self-concept. The surface was made to, to be tolerable, you know, it's, even though it, it's got its ups and its downs and its pains and its pleasures, you know, everyone's, well, that's, that's the human condition. So the human condition is, well, that's just acceptable. You've got to take the good with the bad and, you know, you've got to just live with it. And nobody's perfect and everybody makes mistakes and, you know, it's almost like there's this choir of, oh yeah, that's normal. Uh, that's just the way it is. Some things will never change. But don't you believe it? <laughs> you know, that's the thing, that's the surface. And then that top tier of the self-concept, or the mask, was made to cover over this dark side. You know, the shadow that Carl Jung talked about, the unconscious that's underneath. And that is so dark and so black that uh, it's basically the feeling is you couldn't stand to look upon it. You know, it's, it's that intolerable sense of darkness. And so, the top tier is like the distraction, the bottom tier, Jesus uses a little phrase, draped with sin. <laughs> he doesn't just use the word sin, he says, draped <laughs> with sin. It's dark, we're talking dark and black. So, when we have these expression sessions, it's like an opportunity, that deep darkness that's underneath, you know, it's got to come up, and it's got to be released, and it's got to be brought to the light. And really that's what relationships are about, is that releasing. That's the purpose of relationships, is to heal this darkness by letting it come up and out. That's the purpose of these expression session groups. You know, not just to sit around, la di da di da di da all this love, all this great, you know, if you're not feeling the love and the joy and the, the peace and the freedom, then it's good to just say, here's an issue that I'm dealing with that seems to be recurring in my life. You know, I'm here for healing, I'm here for insight, but I, I want to talk about it. So, the ego mechanism is, ego wants to perpetuate itself, it wants to exist, it wants to continue on, and basically it needs that denial and repression for it to continue on. And so, this bringing these thoughts to the surface and beginning to even bring them into conversations and to talk about them is a way of not protecting them. You know, when it's like the old thing about smiling, put on a happy face, be nice, you know, keep the status quo, don't rock the boat, all those things can be used as ways of keeping that darkness down and put, keeping it repressed and pushed out of awareness and we want to go the other way with that. Also, the spirit in you wants to express, and so the ego is afraid of that. So the spirit will, will again want you to hold back, you know, keep your love and your joy and your happiness bottled up. You know, don't be expressing too much <coughs> love, uh, because who knows what could happen if you if you keep expressing all that love, you could explode. You could, you know, something terrible could happen. You know, you could pop, <laughs> you know, or something would happen. But, but what we're wanting, we're wanting to allow ourselves to express that. Uh, to just let it pour through and start to realize that, that we don't need to be afraid of that love. That that love pouring through us and, and expressing through us is actually like a cleansing, washing, purifying experience. And it's only the ego that's terrified of the love. Because it feels like if, if the love keeps pouring like that, then it will, it will not exist. It will be washed away. And it will. <laughs> you know, that's what it's afraid of. Because it wants to exist. So, the expression of the love is, is very important. So we have the, the expression sessions in the morning. It's kind of like to, 